Welcome to Lecture 16, Section 4.1 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Vectors in Rn, the n-dimensional plane. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. We're going to start this lecture by looking at vectors in the plane. When we talk about the plane here, we are referring to the x-y plane where the only coordinates are the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So, a vector in the plane, the x-y plane, is represented geometrically by a directed line segment whose initial point is the origin, that is the point 0, 0, and whose terminal point is the point x1, x2. It would have been xy, but we prefer to use x1, x2 because after looking at vectors in the plane, we shall move on to vectors in Rn, the n-dimensional plane, and I want you to get used to this notation. This vector is represented by the same ordered pair used to represent its terminal point. The coordinates x1 and x2 are called the components of the vector x. So right here we have the initial point 0, 0, the terminal point, and this vector is our vector x. So for example, the vector u given by 2, 3, or defined by 2, 3, this is 2 right here, that's 3. Geometrically, this is how the vector u would be represented. And geometrically, this is how the vector v would be represented. Vector operations. Let u be the vector defined by the components u1, u2, and v the vector defined by the components v1, v2, then we say that u equals v if and only if they are component-wise equal, i.e. u1 equals v1 and u2 equals v2. b, vector addition u plus or minus v, you simply do component-wise addition and or subtraction. So that will be u1 plus or minus v1, comma, u2 plus or minus v2. Scalar multiplication. If c is a scalar, then c times v equals c v1, comma, c v2. Now, geometrically, this is what we are looking at here. If this is the vector u and this is the vector v, I can complete this parallelogram. And the main diagonal on this parallelogram is our vector u plus v. If v is this vector represented and c is bigger than 0, then this is the vector represented by c times v. Similarly, if c is less than 0 and this is a vector v, then the vector represented by c times v is this vector right here. Theorem 4.1, properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication in the plane. Remember, we are still talking about the plane, the xy plane. Let u, v, and w, or oh, I like calling uh, that omega. So let u, v, and omega be vectors in the plane, and c and d be real numbers, scalars. Then, number one, u plus v is a vector in the plane, i.e., we have closure under addition. Number two, u plus v equals v plus u. So there's commutativity with respect to addition. 
And number three, there is associativity with respect to addition. Number four, the existence of the additive identity, which is zero. Number five, the existence of the additive inverse, which is negative u. And number six, if u is a vector in the plane, then c times u is also a vector in the plane. So we have closure under scalar multiplication. And then we have left distributivity, cu plus v equals cu plus cv. And we also have distributivity from the right where c and d are scalars. So that gives us cu plus du. And c into du equals cdu. And we have the multiplicative identity property. The multiplicative identity is 1. So 1 times u equals u. I would leave the proofs of these various properties as simple exercises for serious students. Hint, use the definition of addition of vectors in the plane and scalar multiplication of vectors in the plane and the proofs will come crumbling like a ripe banana. Now vectors in Rn, the n-dimensional plane. So here we are not just talking about the xy plane or R2, we are talking about Rn n could be 10 in which case we're talking about the n dimensional plane it could be 20 it could even be 1000 so let u be the vector in rn defined by the components u1 u2 u3 un and v be the vector in rn defined by the components v1 v2 v3 right up to vn and see a real number then we define the sum u plus v by u1 plus v1 comma u2 plus v2 and so on and so forth right up to un plus vn re component wise addition similarly C times U equals C U1 comma C U2 comma C U3 and so on and so forth comma C U N. And as expected, U equals V if and only if U I equals V I for every I 1 to N. As a matter of fact, there is really no difference in the definition of addition and scalar multiplication of vectors in the plane and in Rn. Now look at this quick example. If u is a vector given by negative 1, 0, 1, and v is a vector given by 2, negative 1, 5, these are all vectors in R3 find u plus v. So that will be component-wise addition, negative 1 plus 2, that gives us 1. 0 plus negative 1, that gives us negative 1. 1 plus 5, that gives us 6, and so on and so forth. Theorem 4.2, properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication in Rn. The good news here is that these properties are exactly the same as the ones we have seen before for vectors in a plane. The only difference again here is that we are dealing with an n-dimensional plane and vectors will be defined by n components instead of just two. But all the properties, closure under addition, commutativity, of addition, associativity of addition, the existence of an additive identity, the existence of an additive inverse, closure under scalar multiplication, left distributivity, right distributivity, associative property of multiplication, multiplicative identity property are all the same and the proofs are exactly the same.
Theorem 4.3 Properties of Additive Identity and Additive Inverse If V is a vector in Rn and C is a scalar, then the following are true. Number one, the additive identity is unique. Interesting. That means if there exists a U such that V plus U equals V, then U has no other option but to be equal to 0 because we already know that 0 is the additive identity. I'll leave this for you to figure out how to prove it, but it's, it's very easy and straightforward. The additive inverse of V is unique. I.e., suppose there exists another vector U such that V plus U equals 0, then it must be that U equals negative V because we already know that negative V is the additive inverse of V. To prove this, simply start off by suggesting that there are two additive inverses of V and end up showing that both are the same. That's one way to look at it and they actually equal negative V. Or just go ahead and solve the equation V plus U equals 0 for U and you end up with U equals negative V. The third property, 0 times V equals 0. This 0 is a scalar and this other 0 is a vector. And C times 0 equals 0. This C is a scalar. This 0 is a vector. And the answer is a zero vector. And I like the fifth property. If C times V equals zero, then C must be equal to zero or V must be equal to zero. And number six, I'll let you play with these and try to prove them. The all the proofs are straightforward, they're very easy. They would help you practice the definition of addition and scalar multiplication of vectors in Rn. Linear combinations. The vector x is a linear combination of these other vectors v1, v2, vn if there exist scalars c1, c2, cn, such that x equals c1, v1, plus c2, v2, plus, plus, cn, vn. i.e., there exists scalar c1 to cn such that x equals submission i from 1 to n, ci, vi. That's interesting. Example. Let x be the vector defined by negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and u be the vector defined by 0, 1, 4, v the vector defined by negative 1, 2, and omega the vector defined by 3, 1, 2, and all these are vectors in R3. The question is, Find scalars A, B, and C such that X equals AU plus BV plus CW. Usually the questions will not be this direct. It will either take one of the following forms. You are given X, U, V, and Omega. Form number one. Can X be written as a linear combination of U, V, and Omega? Form number two. Find Alpha, Beta, Lambda such that X is a linear combination of U, V, W. 
or form number three so that x can be written as a linear combination of u v and omega in all of these forms the question that is really asked is to find alpha beta lambda or a b c such that x equals a u plus b v plus c omega so to solve this problem we want to find a b and c such that negative 1 negative 2 negative 2 equals a into 0 1 4 plus b into negative 1 1 2 plus c into 3 1 2 now we use our definition of scalar multiplication of vectors in rn and the definition of addition of vectors in rn and our first component would be a times 0 plus b times negative 1 plus c times 3 that gives us negative b plus 3c the next would be a times 1 plus b times 1 plus c times 1 that will give us a plus b plus c and the third component would be a times 4 plus b times 2 plus c times 2 which gives us 4a plus 2b plus 2c now using our definition of equality of vectors in rn we see that negative b plus 3c equals negative 1 a plus b plus c equals negative 2 4a plus 2b plus 2c equals negative 2 and guess what we have here yes you guessed correctly a system of linear equations with three unknowns and three equations and you can solve this by getting the augmented matrix, do a row echelon, a reduced row echelon. You can solve this by taking the LU decomposition of the matrix of coefficients. You can solve this by checking the determinant of the matrix of coefficients. And if it is not zero, then find the inverse of that matrix. Multiply it by the column matrix B, which is negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and so on and so forth. There are several methods to solve for A, B, and C. If you do get real numbers, scalars, like a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 1, then we can say that x can be written as a linear combination of u, v, and omega. But if for some reason the system is inconsistent, then we would conclude that x cannot be written as a linear combination of u, v and omega you got it well we shall see many more problems in class and i'm sure you would love it thank you very much